Hello, welcome to today's Monday Manna. As always, we pray that we find you in good health and in great spirits. My name is Danette Hutchinson, and as always, it is my honor and privilege to serve you in this capacity. We are going to continue with our series, How to Prosper Without a Penny. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you are doing. Thank you for what you have planned for your people in the days of he ahead. Thank you for your promises that fail not. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We bless you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same for your name alone is to be praised. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. Thank you for the outpouring of your spirit upon your people in filling us, working in us to will and do of your good pleasure. For that, we give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, this is today's Monday Manna, and I am excited about continuing our series, How to Prosper Without a Penny. We started our series in the book of 3 John, verse 2, and what prompted this series was the understanding that there were and are um, some opportunities for people to be taken advantage of, even in light of the scriptures. And so um, my heart and desire is that we would understand the scriptures, have an understanding of what they are saying to us personally, so that we can respond properly in any given situation. Now, is that a learning process? Absolutely. Will that take some time? Absolutely. Might we mess up every once in a while? Without a doubt. However, it is a learning opportunity and anything that can be taught can be learned. And so we're encouraging you to take the scriptures that have been shared to your prayer closet Take them to your devotional time. Spend time going over them and asking the Lord about the reality of his word and how it actually fits into your life. This is not the day or time, amen, for us to um, be haphazard about how we understand the scriptures or the word of God. It is truly the time for us and moving forward to have a grasp of firm grasp on what the Lord is saying to us and his original intention for what was said in the beginning. And so we've taken you through a few verses, um, 3 John uh, verse 2, Jeremiah 29, 11, Prov um, Psalms 1 verse 3. We've just given you quite a few um, scriptures to hold on to. Um, to go and um, observe yourself, amen, and see if these things are not true or are true. Like the church in Berea, Paul says, they searched the scriptures to see if what he was telling them was true. And I put that same challenge to you, um, to search the scriptures and see if what we are telling you is not true. You will find that it absolutely is. There is a day that has arrived to the body of Christ where we are being um, encouraged to be the most forthright people that we can possibly be for the glory of God. And so we're going to continue our series, um, How to Prosper Without a Penny. And then I've got something I want to share with you at the end. So our scripture for today that we're going to be using is <laughs> Isaiah 119. Let me get back there. Isaiah 119. We we're talking about how to prosper without a penny um, because it had been in days, well, it had been in days gone by and even in current times where, again, um, the people of God were being encouraged to give 
with an expectation that there would be seemingly an immediate return or an immediate result on our giving. And that unfortunately is not always the case. And so that needs to be understood. When we are giving, it is still in the heart and mind of God, according to his time frame, his time schedule. Um, he is the one who decides how he recompenses us for our, or how he rewards us for our giving or how he, um, yes, recompenses us for our giving. And no man can control that. Only God is in control of that. And so um, our, our lesson here is to uh, wait on the Lord and be of good courage to trust him in our giving, trust him in our tithing, trust him in our offerings that he sees it giving, being given out of a cheerful heart, out of a pure heart, out of a, a heart that wants to give to the um, work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to support the advancement of the kingdom of God. And that those are the things that should um, inspire our giving, not so that we can just get something back. That's not how it works. And so we're just here to lay that on the table. Amen. But Isaiah 119 is a great promise for us. And it says this. It says, if you be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read that out of several more translations. And the reason for that is so that we can, let me move over here. The reason for that is so that we can hear the same scripture being shared out of different translations. It is literally saying the same thing. Now, in context, Isaiah 119, let me put it in context for you because initially it's not talking about anything good, honestly. Uh, it's talking more about how there had been iniquity in the land and how the people had not given their ear to the Lord, how they had not um, given their heart to the Lord. And honestly, you don't, we don't prosper in those areas and attitudes. Amen. But how they had, um, how they had not been mindful of the things of God and how Israel had, um, had actually been uh, basically abandoned, you know, and so because of their disobedience, it had brought some unwelcome consequences into their lives. Um, and so he says in verse 19, starting at verse 18, actually, let me go up here. Okay, let me start at verse 13, because this is the Lord speaking through Isaiah. So verse 11, it says, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. Literally, God is saying, I am sick of your sacrifices. I'm sick of your offerings because you are bringing them out of duty. You're bringing them robotically. You are bringing them out of tradition, out of religion, instead of out of a heart that is committed to God. He said in verse 12, when you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? He's saying, who asked you to bring these things uh, into my courts. I didn't ask this of you. Verse 13 says, bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Oh my gosh. This is an opportunity for the people of God to really um, examine our motives. You know, um, the Bible says that man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his heart. And the Bible also, or directs his steps. And the Bible also says that he examines the motives of our heart. 
God is not really looking at the giving. He's looking at the motive for the giving. And that's why it's important that in our giving, in our tithe, in our offering, in our giving, whether we are sharing with the people that they may give or whether the people are giving, the motive has to be right. The Bible says judgment must begin at the house of the Lord. In other words, making right decisions has to begin at the house of the Lord. Having right motives has to begin at the house of the Lord. Doing things pleasing in the sight of the Lord has to begin at the house of the Lord. And so he's saying to, to Israel, I don't even want you to bring anything to me because your heart is not right, <laughs> because your motive is not right. He says in verse 14, your new moons, this is going to get better, I promise. It's going to get better. Verse 14, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. This is the Lord talking. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine, hand, mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. See, their, their situation is it's not a very good situation for them right now. It's not a very promising situation for Israel right now. I mean, it's like they're getting a spanking, literally. Verse 16 says, he says, wash you. Now, this is the solution to it all. He says, wash you make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes and cease to do evil. This is, God is saying, this is the solution to the whole matter. This is how you change the situation and the circumstance. You uh, put away the evil of your doings. He's speaking to Israel from before mine eyes and cease to do evil. Listen to what he says. Learn to do well, excuse me, learn to do well, seek judgment. This is so beautiful. Learn to do well. That means it can be done. Seek judgment. And that word judgment really talks about having a proper mental attitude and assertion of the situation. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed. We're talking about prospering without a penny. And he's giving them a list of how to do that, how to turn their situation around. See, we can't just keep, we cannot just keep throwing money at God like he's a slot machine. We can't just keep throwing money at God um, as a, uh, an appeasement, as an as a offering for things to turn around in our lives. There, there are things that we need to do that will help us prosper without a penny. You don't have to throw money at God to get his attention. His eyes are everywhere beholding the good and the evil. You don't have to throw money at God to get his presence. The Bible says he's a present help in trouble. Amen. You don't have to throw money at God to get him to hear your prayers. The Bible says that he hears the prayers of the righteous. He's already involved in our lives. And that's why he's saying, look, I want to have a close relationship with you. And he's telling Israel, and the way you're doing it, it's not working for me. <laughs> It's not working for me. There's some things you need to change. So he's telling them, learn to do well. Learn to do those things that are beneficial. I call it fabulous, favorable, advantageous, and beneficial. Learn to do those things that are beneficial. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, help the poor. Relieve the oppressed. You want to spend your money? Go spend it on somebody that actually needs help. Do you want to give money? Give it to a ministry that is actually in a place where you may not be able to go, but your money can go and be a help and a service. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. He's saying help the orphans. Help the widows. This is the heart 
of God our Father. In verse 18, he says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool or as white as wool. Wool that comes from a sheep. Okay, that's what he's talking about. And so he's giving them a solution to their situation. The solution to our problems is not always giving money, throwing money at God as though because I have paid you something, now you owe me a solid. No, <laughs> God didn't owe us a solid or a favor, however you want to say it, but we can't buy him and get him to move on our behalf. That's not how it works. And that's what he's saying to Israel. He's saying, hey, you keep bringing me these sacrifices, you know, um, ritually and religiously and traditionally, and you keep bringing them to me. I'm done with that. Away with that. Stop doing that. And let's get to the bottom of it. Let's get to the root of it. So in talking about how to prosper without a penny, we have to understand that there are certain things that God requires of us, that he desires of us yet and still. And when we surrender to his will and surrender to his desires, surrender to what he's requiring from us. And I say individually because what he might require from me could be totally different than what he requires from you. But the whole point is you and I must be willing and obedient. And verse 19 says this, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. It, it wasn't money. <laughs> now they were bringing um, uh, animal sacrifices and all of that. That was their money. That was their sense of currency. That was their livelihood that they were bringing to him. We just happened to deal in greenbacks or currency. Either way it goes, God says, I don't want you throwing money at me, expecting me to meet your needs like that. I can't be bought. I can't be sold. Okay. He said, but what I can do is honor your willingness and your obedience. And he says, and you shall eat the good of the land. Now I want to give this to you in several different translations several different translations. They are all the, uh, let me look at this one. The common English Bible says this. It says, if you agree and obey, if you agree and obey, you will eat the best food of the land. But if you refuse and rebe rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. The Lord has said this. So he says, if you agree with me and you obey what I'm asking you to do, you will eat the best of the land. Now, again, in this um, time where Isaiah was alive, in this um, culture, they were so dependent on what was coming up from the ground. They were so dependent on agriculture. They were dependent on crops. That is how not only did they support their households and maintain their health, but that was also how they earned an income. The good of the land, the crops of the land, the fields of the land. He said, you'll eat the best of it if you are willing and obedient. And if you agree with me is what he's saying. If you agree with what I'm saying, you're going to eat the best of the land. And agreement has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with money. And so let me look at another one. It says, if you consent and obey, ye shall eat the good things of the land. This is the 1599 Geneva Bible. <laughs> the 1599 edition of the Geneva Bible, it says this. It says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins were as crimson, they shall be made white as snow. Though they were like 
Though they were red like scarlet, they shall be as wool. If you consent and, and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. If you consent and obey, if you agree and obey, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. That's a promise. That is a promise from God. He says, I have land available to you that is fruitful. That is, I mean, it's fully loaded, like a fully loaded potato. It is fully loaded. Anything you would need, everything you would need is in that land. But I'm not accepting your just throwing something at me to try to appease me without being willing and obedient. God wants our hearts more than our money. Let me say that again. God wants our hearts more than our money. He doesn't need our money. <laughs> the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell there. And God does not need money to survive. We need money to survive, but God does not need money to survive. Amen. And so I just wanted to encourage you with Isaiah 119, while we're still talking about uh, prospering without a penny. I love that title. I was sitting, I can't even remember where I was sitting a month and a half ago, but I was just sitting there and kind of contemplating some things and thinking about, um, just thinking about some things. And the Lord dropped that title right in my spirit how to prosper without a penny. Why? Because he has prosperity in mind for us, but it has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with money. Let me tell you something. The same God that spoke to the earth and commanded vegetation to come forth, that's the same God that we, we serve. The same God that said, light be, that's the same God that we serve. The one that said, you know, put the moon in the sky, put the stars in the sky and has named each one of them by name. You know how many stars there are in the sky? <laughs> he has named each one of them by name. He does not need our money. Now, what I'm not saying is this. I am not saying don't give. I am not saying don't tithe. I am not saying don't bring offerings. What I am saying, according to the scriptures, when we started in 3 John verse 2, what I am saying and what I will continue to say is this. You cannot buy God. You cannot buy God with your money. You can't buy his love. You cannot buy his help. You cannot buy his... Um, his things that he has in store for us? No, you cannot do that. And my hope and prayer is that as believers, we will trust in God enough to know that he knows what we need and he knows how to get it to us. Amen. He knows what we need and he knows how to get it to us. The heart of the matter is to be willing and obedient. That is the heart of the matter of this whole how to prosper without a penny. Be willing and obedient to God. Be willing to hear what it is he has to say to you. Just like in these earlier scriptures in first uh, in Isaiah 119, Isaiah 119, be willing to make whatever necessary changes that God is asking you to make. What is he asking you to let go of? What is he asking you to increase? What is he asking you to change? What is it in your house, in your family, on your job, in your business? Is there anything that you need to change? Is there anything that, that we are doing that's not pleasing in his sight? You know he sees everything, right? And so is there anything that we are doing that's not pleasing in his sight that is holding back his hand from giving us the good of the land? Is there anything? And see, so we always have to examine ourselves as believers. 
We don't get a free ride just because we come to Christ. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> we don't get a free ride. We don't get a pass just because we come to Christ. No. To whom much has been given, much is required. There are still standards that as believers, we call ourselves children of God. There are still standards that our father has set that we are required to uphold. Are we going to miss it sometime? Absolutely. Are we going to blow it sometime? Absolutely. But we still push toward the mark. Remember this word prosper means to break through. It means to push forward. It means to keep going. It means to, to press on toward whatever it is that God has in store for us. Amen. Whatever it is that he has in store for you. And that's what he wants us to prosper in. He wants us to break through whatever barriers are holding us back. And there are some. He wants us to know that regardless of what's going on in this world, they're talking about a recession. They're talking about, um, you know, higher interest rates. All of these things that are going on in the world, they do not affect the kingdom of God. They do not affect God's ability to, to um, help us. They don't affect his ability to protect us. They do not affect his ability to provide for us and cause us to prosper. I pray that this series has, has jolted something on the inside of you to say, I'm going to go and study this out for myself. Always go and study it out for yourself. Read the scriptures for yourself and let the Holy Spirit of truth reveal to you what God is saying to you about his word and how to apply it in your life. I always pray that something was said to encourage your heart, your hope, your faith, your trust, and your confidence in God and in God alone. Now, I promised you that I was going to share some things with you at the end of this, um, today's Monday Manna. So let me give you an update. <laughs> That's what I've been calling them. Let me give you an update. I'm giving you an update about two things. One is about my braces. I had the wires changed last Tuesday um, and uh, they hurt. <laughs> she put some rubber bands and they're kind of hidden within, you know, the braces and stuff and they hurt. And so uh, this time around where they change the wires is a little bit more uncomfortable. Absolutely. Absolutely is a little bit more uncomfortable, but guess what? I see the changes happening. I see the rearranging happening. I see the uh, readjusting um, happening. And so in spite of the uncomfortable situation, in spite of the, the slight pain, it's not so painful that I can't talk because I'm talking, right? In, in spite of the slight pain and discomfort, I see the change happening. And I'm excited about that. And that makes the, the discomfort and the slight pain worth it all. Amen. The second thing is this. I'm coming up on my 40th year walking with the Lord. That seems so long ago. But what is significant about that is that um, the children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 years. And they did eat manna from the sky that God provided while they were in the wilderness 40 years. What does that mean? To me, as far as I understand it right now, there is a change coming. There is a shift coming. There is a um, an, an advancement into the promised land that is coming in the next few weeks. Well, we've got to, in the next, I'd say at least a month, a month and a half. It will be 40 years that I committed my life to Christ. And I tell you, it has been the best decision that I've made in all of my life. I've made some good decisions in all of my life, but this is the best one. Amen. This has been the best one. Have I blown it sometimes? Uh-huh. I sure have. Have I made some mistakes? Yep, I sure have. <laughs> have I regretted some things? Absolutely. Has God been there with me? 
through thick and thin? Yes, he has. Has he seen me through hard times and difficulties? Yes, he has. He is a faithful God. Has he prospered me in this 40-year journey? He certainly has. And has he provided for me when I didn't know where it was coming from? He absolutely has. So I'm excited to see what these next years are going to hold. But there is a change coming. And I feel like we're coming out of the wilderness, which means there's not going to be a need for manna because we're going to learn to flourish in the promised land. And I have to tell you, I'm excited about that. The other thing about that, though, is this. There will be some access to um, recordings and um, podcasts and YouTube channels that are going to be specifically available to those who want to partake. So if that's you, you're looking to flourish in your life. You are looking for encouragement, exhortation um, towards women, then this is going to be the place for you. If you are looking for an opportunity to share your thoughts and feelings in a safe place, this is going to be for you. I'm just telling you ahead of time, it is coming. So gear up your heart, gird up your loins, and let's get ready to go into this promised land together. Until we meet again on next Monday, man, may God richly bless you. Remember, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God.